So now that we've seen some efficient sorting algorithms, let's go back to the first one we looked at, selection sort, and see whether we can improve it. The big problem with selection sort is that it takes a long time to find the maximum of the list by scanning through. And it's very easy to see that you can't actually do better than that. If you're just scanning through a list, you have to look at every element in that way just to be sure that you have the maximum. However, it's possible that we could use a different data structure. We're going to look at the idea of a priority queue. So a priority queue is just an abstract data type, which we think of as a big container, and it contains elements. Now the important thing is this. Each element has what is called a priority. It has a particular real number, let's say, associated with it, which is its priority. I might as well make them all different. Now, the priority queue has only a couple of basic operations. One is to insert. A new element comes along, it can be inserted and it will get a different priority value from the original. It can have any priority at all. It doesn't have to be related to what's already in there and it doesn't have to be related to the time that it arrived. We know that normal queue, it's first in and first out. If you're waiting for a bus, something like that. In real life, you run into priority queues, for example, in the emergency room of a hospital. And you go to the triage procedure, you can be bumped down the queue by someone coming in with a more urgent medical problem. By the way, triage is a French word for sorting, which is a little confusing when you're thinking about it from an algorithm point of view. So we have a, a priority queue. It's a big blob like that, and it has two basic operations. One I said is to insert, and the other is to remove the element with biggest priority. So in this case, maybe all the priorities are, we'll say larger number is higher priority. It can, we can quickly, we hope, extract this element, delete it, output it, and there we are. Those are the only two things we can do. We can't delete an arbitrary element, we can't find, we can't traverse, we can't search, we can't sort things easily directly inside there, but we can delete the highest priority element. Now think about this abstractly. Whenever we have something like this, we can always do sorting. And it's very similar to selection sort. We just start with the original list, build a priority queue by successively inserting the elements in. So we're trying to sort them, so we're trying to get to output them uh, in increasing order of key, for example. And then, we successively take the maximum off and put them in reverse order, let's say. So put the maximum over here, then we delete the maximum of what's left, and it goes there, etc. So it's just like selection sort, but done more generally. Now selection sort is a special case of priority queue sort precisely because an unsorted list is a special case of priority queue. It's a way of implementing a priority queue. So our basic operations, in other words, we're going to implement a priority queue using an unsorted list. Our operations are simple. Insert is the usual insertion into the list, and you can insert it any, at one end. If it's a linked list, that's easier than if it's an array, but either way, we know how to insert elements. And then the finding the maximum and extracting it is just sequential search and then moving it to the end or deleting it and putting it on the output. Okay? In this case, we can do it in place because we use the original list and we put the deleted elements at the end of it. You can't do that in general. In general, you would have to 
most likely delete the element and put it to a separate output list so it wouldn't be in place for an arbitrary implementation of a priority queue. But for this type of implementation, this simple implementation, it would. So selection sort, not surprisingly, is related to priority queue sort. But what's interesting is that insertion sort is also a special case. Here though, instead of using an unsorted array, we use a sorted array. So we start with the first element and we insert it. Forget about the in-place nature for now, that's a refinement, we'll do that later. Then you go to the second element, you compare it, you insert it into this list, and because it's a sorted list, you have to make sure it goes in the right position. Then the third one comes and gets inserted in here, and it swaps into its correct position. By the time you've finished building that, you have a completely sorted list, which is the priority queue implementation. You can then delete the elements if you like, one by one, as we did before, and output them. Now in the case of insertion sort, we don't need to build a separate list. We do everything in place in the original list by pushing them to the left. And we don't need to output them at the end either, as same with selection sort. The final list already had everything in sorted order, so we didn't need to output. And it's very interesting that both selection sort and insertion sort are special cases of this. So the problem is that for a selection sort, suppose we use an unsorted list, like an array or a linked list, insertion might be quick, it will be in general, but deletion of the maximum is very slow because it takes a long time to find it. We, haven't, we don't have very much structure in our data structure. In the insertion sort case, insertion is quite slow because you have to sort while you're doing that. Finding the maximum will be easy on the other hand because it's always at the end of the left sublist that's being built by insertion sort. And we're willing to give up some speed in one of those two operations. For, so if you think about how we do it, we basically do n insertions and then n deletions. So if we could do those in time of order log n, then we could get n log n as the overall running time, order n log n. At the moment though, what we're doing is n insertions in selection sort which take uh, order n time, but then n deletions which take order n squared, or insertion sort where it's vice versa. But either way, the total amount is of order n squared. If we can do better than that by cutting down the insertion and the deletion so they're both only order log n, that would be ideal. Well, it turns out that we can find a data structure where there's a nice trade-off between the insertion and the deletion. And what we're going to talk about is what's called a binary heap. So it's a type of binary tree, special type of binary tree, whose structure is very constrained. The shape of the tree is what's called left complete. So it's a binary heap. It must be left complete, which means basically that all the levels of the tree are filled up completely until we get to the last level where there might be some missing. But there are no gaps. For example, if we deleted this element, there would no longer, if I deleted this element, that would no longer be acceptable as a binary heap. It's not a left complete tree because there's something missing there. So that's an example of a left complete tree. Now what makes it a binary heap? We store keys that we are looking to sort in the nodes. Each node has a particular key data value and they have a priority. Okay, for when we're using it for sorting, the priority will just be the original key value. In general, you just have to have data with some kind of priority associated to them, which is a, some totally ordered set. So we can tell which one has higher priority than the other. And then 
the key thing here is that the maximum is always at the root. It's, so it's bigger than, greater than or equal to everything here and here. And this flows all the way down. So on every path from the root, the priority values, the key values, decrease. Every node has a value which is greater than or equal to everything below it. So for example, for this one, if we're using just ordinary integers as priorities, and the larger ones are higher priority, we could have a 7, 5, 4, 1, 3, 2, something like that. You'll notice from later on, a binary heap is not as constrained as a binary search tree. And they're not that closely related. They are both binary trees, but they have very different rules. They have very different ways of comparing the values of the nodes. So it must be left complete and also satisfy the heap order property. And the heap order property is exactly what we just said. Suppose we have such a tree. It's pretty easy to see that the uh, deletion should be quick, or at least finding the maximum is quick. So finding it's always at the root. So you just go straight to the root. But then if you want to delete it, then we have a problem, because deleting that will obviously, if we remove the node, would completely disconnect the tree and make a mess. What we want is a tree with one node less than we have now, and we want it to have the right shape. So what we really want to do is delete the least important node, or the last added one, which is down here. If we delete this one, then we would have a binary tree of the correct shape to be a binary heap with one fewer element. So what we do is we swap those elements like that, because we don't want to lose this element down here when we delete it. Then we delete. And now everything is okay down in this subtree. We haven't destroyed the heap order property. This is okay, but this is not right. So we have to move that to the right place, the new root. It's got to sink down now to find its correct position. And the easiest way is to swap it with one of the children. If you swap it with the smaller of the two, four would come up here, five would be here, you'd have another violation. So it makes more sense to swap it down with the larger of the two. And when I do that, I will move it like that. Because we picked the larger of the two, the heap property is going to work on this side of the tree fine. But now we still have to keep sinking down until we get to the right place. So we will swap it one more time with the larger of the two children there. Now we have a heap ordered tree, which is left complete, so it's a binary heap. So that's how you delete an element. And notice how much work we needed. Finding it was easy, it was at the root. Then we did a swap, and then we have to sink this down, and we have to go down as far as the height of the tree, at worst case. But the height of the tree can't be very small, We've already seen that, in fact, the height of the tree is about order log n, where n is the number of nodes. The number of nodes doubles at each level until you get to the bottom. So the height of this tree is order log n, very close to the binary log of n, in fact. And so that's the amount of work we have to do in these swaps. So the deletion process can be done in order log n time. Now how about insertion? Suppose I have a tree like this and I want to insert a new element with some arbitrary priority. Well, what I need to do is to insert here. So I need to create such a new element. I might as well put my new element in there. Let's say it's 
4.5. And now uh, the heap order property is violated because I have a small element above a bigger one. So I just swap it up. I get the, the big element, the one I've just put in. That's what the only place the violation can be at the moment. And I swap it back up. I got now it's up there, and there's the four. And then I swap it up if necessary, but I don't need to. So this bubbling up is a process that could only go as far as the root in the worst case. Again, the height is log n, so it can only take order log n time. So both insertion and deletion can be done in order log n time. Putting that together, building a heap by n insertions and then deleting n times will give us an order n log n sorting algorithm, which we can call heap sort. So I've got two main questions for you about heap sort. We've seen the basic description of it in terms of trees. First question, do we need to do it like that? Do we need to actually build a tree and run it like that? Or can we do everything in place in the original input list? Second question is, can we actually build a heap faster than what I've showed? What we've done so far is to start with an empty heap, a tree with certain properties, and repeatedly insert elements into it one by one. You'll notice that every time we did that, we restored the heap property. We made sure that after every insertion, we had a heap. But for the purposes of heap sort, we don't actually need that. Okay, we only need the heap at the end, because it's only at the end that we start doing anything with it. So maybe there's a cleverer way that doesn't do extra work in the building phase. You'll need to do something at some point, but maybe there's a quicker way to build this heap. Try and see whether you can come up with anything about that.